Hey Gang, welcome to Gdansk. Gdansk is a lovely city and in this video I'll show you why it should be on your bucket list. To me, it is the hidden gem of the Baltic Sea. Gdansk is the main seaport of Poland and it's probably lovely to visit all year long. I came in November, but if you come in the summer, you could go to the beach. I was there the weekend of the 11th of November to be precise, so it's actually Independence Day for Poland. You'll see a bit of the parade later on in this video. Poland is part of the European Union since the beginning of the 2000s, but they still use their own money, the Zloty. If you come from the UK, it's very easy to convert, because at the moment of filming, so in 2023, 5 Zloty is one pound. Gdansk Old Town is absolutely beautiful, with all those Dutch-style buildings. It is 95% new, though, because Gdansk was massively destroyed by the Russians through the Second World War, so all of this has been rebuilt pretty much as it would have been at the time. You'll spot a lot of amber in all the gift shops in town. Gdansk was on the famous Amber Road. Amber in the Middle Ages was almost like a magic stone. For them it looked magic because it did not behave like a normal stone. Because we know now, of course, that it's made out of resin, from tree bark. If you keep umber in your hands for a while, it will warm up. When most other stones would stay cold, it's easy to see how they could see some magical powers into the umber. And still today, some people consider umber to have some interesting health benefits. This is the Long Market Square, where you can find the Arthur's Court. It's the white building there, inspired by the legend of King Arthur. And this is the town hall, the red brick building. And that's the Neptune's Fountain. The Neptune's Fountain has been there since the beginning of the 17th century. And it has inspired a famous drink, the Goldwasser. It is a strong vodka-based liquor with those iconic little golden flakes inside. The liquor has existed since the late 1500s, but was not that popular until there was a big marketing and rebranding effort. So they had the idea to pretend that Neptune got annoyed with all the gold in the fountain. You know, people often drop a coin to, to make a wish. And he would have turned the water into that amazing liquor, the Goldwasser. That interesting red brick building there, that was a crane. The old crane has become very iconic. It's now on all the Gdansk postcards. It was powered by a giant wheel in which humans would run, like a human hamster. And slightly hidden here, you might spot Evelion. All around Gdansk, you might come across this little lion cub. Lions are a symbol of Gdansk. They're, they are on the crest, the official crest of the city. And you can spot lions all across the city, really. And a few years ago, they decided to create this little Evil Lion. You could get yourself a map. There's a little trail of them all across Gdansk. That was Evil Lion actor, and this is Evil Lion astronomer. The name Evil Lion has been inspired by Johannes Evelius, a local astronomer. All of those little statuettes are connected to the local history. This is a mercury thermometer because Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit was from here in Gdansk, and here is Evelion with a thermometer. At the moment, there are about 10 Evelions in town. I've been looking for all of them, apart from one that was stolen. It was Evelion Brewer. He had a beer because there were a lot of breweries here in, in Gdansk. And another one that I could not access because sadly it was inside a museum. This is the Motlawa River, and of course, you can take a photo with the sign Gdansk. And ta-da! Evelion! This one represents volunteering. Not to show what is the historical reference here. This interesting building here is one of the oldest one in Gdansk. 
because the base of the building actually dates back to the Teutonic Knights. It has been used as a prison tower on a torture chambers. And this beautiful facade here used to be the Royal Artillery. Today it belongs to a school of art. Poland has pretty much always had a white eagle on its crest, as you can see here. Just next to the former prison is the Golden Gate, beautiful entrance towards the long uh, Market Street. And this is the St. Mary's Church in Gdansk. I believe in the summer you can actually climb up to the top. From the inside, it's a beautiful whitewashed uh, building. And the most impressive is the clock. Look at the little characters moving up there. Adam and Eve at the top are about to ring the bells. There have been a very recent burial inside the church, which is quite rare in those medieval churches to be buried inside. It's the former mayor, Pavel Adamovic. He was sadly murdered through a charity event. A young man, former convict with mental health issues, jumped on stage and stabbed him in the chest. The city might look fairly quiet on my video, by the way, because I did a lot of the filming early morning, but it was actually a busy weekend. That is a bridge that lifts up to let the boats go through. Some of the road signs, by the way, are quite interesting. The first time I came across this one, the little girl with a balloon, I believed it was street art. I suppose it looks a bit like a Banksy. So be careful if you come and drive in Poland, because apparently there's a lot of little girls with a big balloon. Inside that tower there, there's a scare attraction, a ghost attraction, if that takes your fancy. We are in the area of the Granary, at the time when Gdansk was such a big port. It is around here that they used to store the grain. And this is the Green Gate. As you can see, it's not green. They think some of the windows used to be green back in the days. Who knows? Here is a statue of Johannes Sevelius, the famous astronomer. He's from the early 17th century, and he was accepted at the Royal Society in London. That was a collective with some of the best independent scientists in the world. Today, Johannes has a beer named after him. Cheers! Now, the reason why Gdansk was massively destroyed through the war, it is because the Nazis tried to protect it. They could have just let it go, but they didn't want to let it go because of the shipyards that we had here. Now, through the communist regime, the shipyard workers were working in really terrible conditions. In 1870, some of them rebelled already and were killed by the Soviet regime. Now, if you are a bit adventurous, you can go and explore the shipyards. They are still running today, not as busy as they once were, but you still have some boats being built there. Recently, Rafael Nadal, the tennis player, he had a yacht commissioned from there. Now, through the communist regime, the work was hard. The conditions were terrible. And there was no food on the shelves. And the, the workers here, they rebelled. This is the Solidarity Museum. Solidarity is the name of the movement of those strikers that were extremely brave here and went on strikes against the communist regime, of course. That movement eventually became a proper political party and freed Poland from the Soviet Union and the rest of Eastern Europe followed. You can see the Solidarity graphic and logo here, very poignant. And this is a Papomobile. There was a Polish Pope at the time, and it gave a lot of courage to those uh, strikers. He used to come and take confessions in that little car. 
all Gdansk, all town is walkable, but you can also take a tram. Just make sure you put your ticket in the machine, though. This is a little monument for the Boy Scouts that were executed by the Nazis just before the beginning of World War II. Now, I did not want this video to be too sad, so if you want to learn more about World War II in Gdansk, I've actually created another video about that. Now, as I mentioned, I visited on the 11th of November, so it's of course the end of the First World War. So there are celebrations all across Europe. At the beginning of the 20th century, though, Poland was controlled by the Germans. So the Treaty of Versailles, for them, it is Independence Day. So let's watch the parade. Now, let's go and see more evil lions. I just love this little lion cub. Sometimes they look even more like monkeys, but love them anyway. So this is a former water mill using the power of the river. And down here is evil lion businessman. He's counting his grain. With a cell phone for some reason. Super cute. And this one is evil lion Meyer. He's the, he's the, the boss of the city. Now, if you want to go for a day trip uh, somewhere around Gdansk, you've got quite a few options. You could jump on a train to go towards the beach, to go towards Sopot or Gdania. It's known as the Tri-Cities. Personally, I did not go to the beach because it was November, but I went to Marlborough Castle. If you come and visit, though, don't be as stupid as I was. Originally, I was not going to go to Malbrook. I wanted to go to a concentration camp. I was going to jump on a bus for about 50 minutes to go to Stunthof concentration camp. It is the bus 870, if anyone was planning to go there. But on a Sunday, those buses, they run only every, like, four hours. So I changed my mind and I jumped on a train to go towards Malbrook Castle the largest brick castle in the world. And you know, being a Sunday in November, I didn't worry too much. Well, guess what? I got there and it was fully booked. So I could not actually go into the castle. I came all the way for nothing. So do book ahead if you get the chance. Now, the castle dates back to the 13th century. It's from the Teutonic Order of Malbrook. The Teutonic Knights, they were a German Catholic order doing crusades in the north. You know, after the crusades in Palestine, they were a bit out of a job, so they decided to go and convert the pagans of the Baltic countries. As you can see, the castle was massively destroyed through the Second World War. Those knights were very powerful and very violent, really. 
and they became almost like a, an independent state. And they built some of those amazing fortifications, such as Malbrook. It looked a bit more like colonialism than crusades, really. Now, the town of Malbrook, it's actually quite cute, but on a Sunday in Catholic Europe, everything is closed anyway, so I kind of regretted not going into the castle. This is the beautiful train station here, the brick building. Now, I know through my followers, I have quite a few cemetery fans, so I went into a cemetery for you. Some of the graves were interesting. They came with their own seat. It was quite beautiful at this time of the year, you know, with the colors of the autumn. A hairdresser here. Now, it's very silly, but every time I see a hairdresser in Poland, it makes me think of Severin Klozowski, one of my favorite Ripper suspect. We didn't talk much about food today because I was alone, so I didn't really try any fancy restaurants or anything like that. But there's a lot of good snacks. In most of the off-licenses, you can get a good hot dog for like a pound. And I tried some of the, the ready meals and I cooked at the hostel, so I didn't experience any of the fancy restaurants for you. If you have enough energy, you can go up the hill, the Gora Gradowa. From there, you can have a lovely view over the city and the shipyards. I hope you enjoyed that little video. If you want to see a bit more of me, make sure you check my live section. That is what I do on YouTube, live streaming. And if you go to the airport leaving a dance, make sure you look for Evelion Aviator. Bye.